Hello again and welcome back to London. Now between the US fiscal cliff and the usual Eurozone shenanigans, there's definitely been a risk of sentiment in the currency market, but not even the normal safe haven currencies have been appreciating. But I've been speaking to Alejandro Zambrano from the dailyfx.com about this very issue. Um, there's, there's not a lot of positive news out in the markets at the moment. Is, isn't it quite hard to pick a, any currency which is likely to benefit in the current environment? It depends on how you look at it and if you're looking to see a solution in the current problems or not. Overall, I think the biggest issue is volatility being fairly low. And, but there are some currencies where you still have some opportunities. Yeah, um, I know you're looking at the Aussie CAD at the moment with particular interest. Yeah, uh, you're right about that. The Aussie CAD is interesting because if you look at statistical models and the way the interest rate uh, markets are looking right now, they predict a move down to say 101 or 101.50 from current levels where we are at 103, uh, 103.50. Um, if you look at the interest rates expectations, uh, traders and markets have been scaling back on the amount of uh, cuts they expect that the Central Bank of Australia will, uh, will perform over the next 12 months. They were previously looking for cuts of 113 basis points, but right now they scale that back to roughly uh, 50, and that's in the top end of the range. While if you look at the Canadian economy, uh, they're afraid to some extent on the indebtedness of the households and uh, in that case we are at the lower ends to some extent of what markets are, expectation, uh, are expected. Sure. So in essence, most likely we're going to see uh, speculation of further cuts in Australia while we in Canada might actually see people expecting increases going forward. So do you have any targets for that particular pair? Yeah, for that particular pair, if we look at that, also if we combine you know, base metals and energy prices, we should be trading closer to 101.50 than current levels, which is roughly 103. And we also have, from a technical perspective, a head and shoulders patterns. So if you, a trader will look at the currency pair and maybe look at a four hour time frame, we can clearly see that a break under 103.50 is most likely gonna take us down to these lower. So we have a fundamental case, and a technical case for taking us lower in the Aussie CAD. And what about opportunities with the yen? The, the conversation with the yen has totally shifted recently. We were always talking about intervention in the past, but it's gone the opposite way now. We're seeing some weakness there. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, there's a lot of reasons for this trading higher. I would say the main reason is that the uh, bull market we had in bond markets in the US is now uh, not as strong as before. We might actually see yields hitting higher. And there's a high correlation between what the 10-year-old bond is doing in the States and the Japanese yen. So looking at prices has definitely accelerated a lot and we're starting to reach the 83 and the 84 level. Now if we look at, look at it in the big picture, this rally is a little bit overextended, but I do believe that maybe we can reach the 83 later on in a one to two weeks time, but then you got the 84 level. That most likely what's gonna happen, when it come up there, we're gonna trade sideways for say four or five weeks and then maybe going lower. Uh, key levels though, if you want to trade this, it would be either to go short close to these highs after maybe a week or two of consolidation. Alternatively, if we move lower, but do not extend under the 79 level. Yeah, because the political parties in Japan have really committed to trying to weaken the yen, do you think there is now a change in the conversation about the yen that we have to forget about intervention for a while at least? I mean, there's definitely a commitment. They're talking about negative interest rates. Uh, to really, uh, you know, limit the strength of the Japanese yen, but I am not really so sure that that's actually what's driving the uh, the markets. They have been talking about it for a long time. Uh, if you look back at the Japanese yen against dollar, I think it was trading at 350 in uh, 1973. It moved as low as what was it, uh, 72 or something. So it's been going down for more than 30 years. If it continues to drop for an additional 10, 20 years, it wouldn't surprise me a bit. So I don't really believe that what the uh, central bank and, and the government in, in Japan is doing is going to help that much, unfortunately. Yeah. I think it's just more of a technical uh, type of a play right now and what's going on in the States. Yeah, and what about um, Euro-Dollar? Again, we've seen the announcement 
about Greece delayed. But yeah. Th th generally speaking, the market shrugged that off now. Definitely. I mean, you had a lot of people and a lot of experts, you know, being interviewed about this. They were starved for a short period of time. But now, you know, if you if you go out in the streets of London, like everyone expects them to exit anyway. So I think everyone that wanted to trade that has most likely already made a move. So that's definitely to some extent already priced in. I think the key levels we should look like right now is the fiscal cliff in the U.S. Will that spur another recession in the U.S.? And will this, of course, dampen uh, growth in the uh, eurozone? That's one uh, and the most important item right now. And then you have uh, Ben Bernanke in December. Will he announce more quantitative easing? Now, my take on this is that both of this will be resolved to the benefit of the euro. Most likely, fiscal cliff will be avoided and if we do get some type of, uh, I mean, if we do get a lower GDP growth because of this, it's not going to be as big as people believe. So this could definitely help to form a low where we are right now, say close to the 126, 125 level in the euro dollar. And you have Ben Bernanke, uh, I think it's the 10th of December uh, or 11th of December, he has uh, the next Federal Reserve interest rate meeting. They will also have a press conference. Usually when they announce big things, they do that with the press conference. Most likely they're going to extend Operation Twist. And as we all know, Ben Bernanke, he's really, really keen on intervening in the market. He will most likely intervene more than ECB, and this could definitely take markets a little bit higher. So my suggestion to traders, look for a low close to 26 and 25 at most. We already hit the 26.50. That could be the low, but it's too early right now to know. Well, that's all for the moment. I'll keep the interviews coming here from London. But for now, goodbye.